welcome this evening to Bible Way Community Baptist Church, the place where Jesus Christ is still the Lord of all and the Word of God still transform lives. We're excited and delighted that you've tuned in this evening to be a part of our Wednesday night Bible study. We hope and pray that things are going well for you and your family in your neck of the woods. And we have a wonderful, wonderful Bible study for you tonight. But before we go into Bible study, uh, we want to uh, encourage all of you to come out and worship the Lord with us this Sunday morning right here at Bible Way Community Baptist Church. Matter of fact, this is Mother's Day. This is Mother's Day. And so um, uh, come and help us celebrate, help us celebrate the Lord, a uh, great gift that he has given to us. The Lord has given to us women's. The Lord has given to us women's. And if you have a, a wife, man, you need to bring your wife to church because I know she wants you to go to church. So go to church with her this Sunday morning. Go to church with her and uh, praise the Lord with her. That, that's one of the greatest gifts that you could do. And if your mom is still living, we ask that uh, you go to church with your mom. And you know your mom wants you to come on to church. And so go to church with your mom this coming Sunday. Amen and amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin our Bible study time together this evening. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and we do praise you for who you are, the God who hear, and you still answer prayers. Now, Lord, speak to our hearts tonight in a mighty way. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. All right. Uh, we still study contemporary issues. Now, this lesson here is uh, lesson number uh, 26. I kind of got them out of order, though, because uh, next week you're going to see lesson 25, uh, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, but the lesson we're going to be looking at tonight is should women wear hats <laughs> to church? Since, since this is coming up on Mother's Day, uh, you don't hardly see women wearing hats <laughs> To church anymore. When I grew up as a little boy, you saw women's having hats, uh, wearing uh, hats to church all the time. But in uh, uh, this day and age, you very seldom see that done. And, uh, you know, we're having a lot of activities this week. Matter of fact, we're going to have a women's brunch for our women's uh, this coming Saturday. And then we're going to uh, uh, have uh, a, like a hat day here at the church. But I want to try to answer that question tonight. And to help me to answer that question, I went into our women's <laughs> Sunday school classes. I went into the women's Sunday school class because I believe that we need to get some information. We need to get some information. And I've asked the women, not this question, but a similar question. Would you like to see the women wear hats to church? Would you like to see more women wearing hats to church? And listen to what they said. So watch this. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm interrupting this class because I'm the pastor. Thank you. Uh, the proud pastor of Bible Way Community Baptist Church. And uh, I'm working on a project. And I need somebody to help me. And uh, they told me that the proclaimers class is <laughs> You know, next Sunday is our Mother's Day, and we're going to try to connect the present with the past by our ladies wearing hats. Yeah. Uh -huh. Those who choose to wear hats. Mm -hmm. But I got to thank you. I began to ask myself this question, and this is what you could help me with. 
Would you like to see, ladies, start wearing hats again in church? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, it's no right and wrong answer. Right. Because I'm pretty sure we came up with a law that every lady come through these doors that, by the way, has to have a hat and we're going to turn them away. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm pretty sure somebody would say, I don't know why Pastor came up with that. Right. I don't, right. Know, I don't know if that was a, I don't think that was the law. I think that was something else. I'm going to tell Sister Willa that she needs to quit feeding Pastor pizza at night. <laughs> and these strange beds that God told me. But my sister right here, you say, no, like I say, there is no right and wrong answer. You wouldn't like for us to go back to that tradition where we're coming. That's part of the ladies' attack. That's, my, that's just my two cents. And that's okay. I want to hear your two cents. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that? I mean, you know, it's because to me it's more about bringing your heart. And everybody's not going to be able to wear a hat or they may not come because they don't have a hat. Yes. Or they may feel like, now nah, i got to go out and buy all these hats. <laughs> because every Sunday, you know, Sunday, every yeah. Sunday you might not want to wear the same hat. So, yeah. in my opinion, I'm not. Oh. I, I, now, if we made that here, by the way, I would follow the, the leadership of the church. But that's not something I would have. Amen.
she could get her. She, 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 What did you say? Speak loud. I can, we can't wait. I got two already. Right. <laughs> one for the outfit, one on deck in case Ooh. the other person don't run. <laughs> If you want to know, see, women's, God gave us women's. Women's are like the mamathas. They are like the mamathas. The man is like the thermostat. He puts out. He puts out what is cold, you know, hot. And stuff. But the women's, they're going to let you know. They're like a, uh, the mamata. They're going to let you know whether you're registering hot or whether you're registering cold. All right, and so we thank God for the women's, and so we saw kind of like some mixed answers there, but, uh, and so we got some that says yes, and we got some that uh, says uh, no. So thank you, thank you, thank you, ladies, for participating in our survey. Now, the question that I'm going to be asking tonight is should women wear hats to church? Should they wear hats to church? Now, this is a different course than what I asked them, as well as this is a different course than that people often want uh, uh, us to address uh, in terms of head coverings uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, we're not going to deal with that because that's, that's a whole lesson tonight. I mean, a, a whole lesson in itself. That, that lesson there will take us at least an hour to cover that. But tonight, I just want to hit this lesson real quick, about 15, 20 minutes, and that's going to be it. And I just want to ask three questions. The first question is, did men wear hats? Did men wear hats back in Bible days? Well, yes, you're going to find out 
that men's, they wore caps, they wore caps, and matter of fact, their caps look like our skull caps. Uh, the men's, uh, they wore head scarves, they wore head, head scarves, and they wore turbans, they wore turbans. Because keep in mind, that was in the Middle East, over in Israel and Saudi Arabia and Jordan and Egypt and uh, 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 Iran and uh, Iraq. Yes, uh, in those areas, it, it can get extremely hot. It can get extremely hot. So uh, you got to have something on your head. And so, yes, uh, the men's, they will... Uh, caps, scarves, uh, uh, something, some kind of clothing over their head, turbans, some kind of clothing over their head in, in order to protect them against the uh, sun. Uh, now, the high priest, the high priest, he had a, one of these beautiful turbans on. And as a matter of fact, he even had it uh, where he had it, uh, some jewelry up there where uh, it was a phrase, holy unto the Lord. Let me get that scripture. Uh, that's Exodus chapter 28, verse 36. It says, you shall also make a plate of pure gold and shall engrave on it like the engraving of a seal, holy to the Lord. And so he not only had a, um, a turban, but he had a gold plate up there that said, holy unto the Lord. And uh, so to answer that question right quick, uh, the men's wear hats. Yes, they had some kind of head covering. So we'll just say yes. They had some kind of head covering. What about the women's? Did women's wear hats? We're talking about back in Bible days now. We're talking about back in Bible days. Did women's wear a hat? Well, when you look at the women's, yes. Yes, go keep in mind, the sun don't discriminate. <laughs> so those women's, they had to have some kind of head scarf. They had to have uh, some kind of clothing. A lot of the women's, they had uh, uh, something that was a, uh, it was like a hoodie. It was like a hoodie because it was a part of their um, long robe, like out of garment. And uh, a lot of time they just, you know, brought that lit hood up and uh, uh, covered themselves. And then other women's, they had veils. They had veils. Now, uh, the issue with the veil because uh, most of the time when they was in the presence of men, they veiled themselves because uh, you was not, you know, some customs, they didn't want you to make eye contact with a man because, see, back in Bible days, uh, men had the power of authority to divorce a woman. And in Jesus' day, they was divorcing for any reason. So if a lady would make eye contact or something with a man uh, that wasn't her husband, then that man could divorce her. So um, uh, a lot of the ladies, when they went out publicly, they had a veil. But like I say, when it comes to the veil, that custom uh, changed because when uh, uh, Rebecca, when she first saw Isaac, uh, uh, she was unveiled. Uh, uh, and then she had to veil herself. She had to veil herself once she saw uh, Isaac, which was going to be her husband. Uh, let me get that scripture because some of you may want to see that. Genesis chapter 24, verse number 65 said, she says to the servant, who is this man walking in the, the field to meet us? And the servant said, he is my master. Then she took the veil and covered herself. So that lets me know she didn't have that veil on at first. But then when she realized, oh, that's Isaac, oh, let me go ahead. Because keep in mind, uh, uh, women's back in Bible day, particularly the Old Testament time, you was treated almost just like a servant, uh, uh, particularly 
uh, heathen, heathen marriages and stuff. Now, Christian marriages and stuff, women's and men's, was treated as partners. That's what you're going to find out in the Christian marriage. Um, as we go on a little bit further in the New Testament, uh, Paul, he addressed that uh, issue about uh, women's uh, when uh, head coverings there at Corinth. Uh, because keep in mind, Corinthian, the city of Corinth, that was like a vanity fair. That was, that was like Las Vegas, uh, what have you. And uh, you had all these temple prostitutes. And, and these temp one of the ways you knew a temple prostitute is she had her hair uh, shaved off. She went bald-headed and stuff. It had jewelry and stuff on, but she was bald-headed. And uh, so Paul didn't want them to mistake a Christian woman for a prostitute. And he talks about that over in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 6. He says, For if a woman does not cover her head, let her also have her hair cut off. But if it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaven, let her cover her head. So Paul gave clear instructions about let her cover her head. Make sure that when she get ready to uh, uh, pray or prophesy in the name of the Lord, she don't need to come up there before the church being uncovered. Now, we're going to talk about that in another le uh, lesson. We're going to talk about that in another lesson all together. Uh, but because the night, what person we answer in the night? Should women wear hats? We're just talking about wearing hats. That's all I'm <laughs> I want to deal with tonight. Should women wear hats in the church? Well, when you start looking at that word hat and what have you, you'll find out over in Luke chapter 15, verse number 8 through 10, there's a story. Jesus talks about that story about a lady that had a lost coin. Let me get the scripture. Uh, Luke chapter 15, verse number 8 through 10. It says, Of what woman, if she has ten silver coins and lose one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she find it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I have lost. In the same way, I tell you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And so this lady, for years, you know, I thought that this lady just had like a little uh, coin a bag, a little bag where she put a coin in. And uh, she was counting one day and said, oh, man, I lost, you know, one of my silver coins. And keep in mind, back in Bible day, silver and gold was valuable. It was valuable. And uh, uh, this lady had lost. She had 10, but she counted and she said, man, I, 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 I lost one. And so she swept the house and found That ain't really so much what that was about. A lot of theologians say this lady she had a hat. She had a hat. And this hat had all kind of jewelry up there. And it had not only just jewelry up there, it had money up there. It had a lot of money. And that hat was given to her as a diary, as a diary when she got married. And, uh, and, and so... Uh, these ladies, they would hold on to that. So if you ever uh, fought, you know, if they ever fell on hard time, if the marriage fell on hard time, you had something to fall back on. But this lady here, uh, she had counted. I don't know if they had already had fallen on hard time, but she, she counted it and she saw that uh, one of the coins was missing. Now you think about this. This was in her house. I could understand that this lady was wearing this hat. So this tell me she was wearing her hat at, 
in her own house. That's, that's because people used to try to impress you when, they, when you would come over to their house. The lady would dress, you know, in nice uh, robes, nice jewelry. I mean, they would flaunt their wealth. Jesus lived in the day where they flaunt their wealth. Remember how uh, the Jesus tell that story of the rich man and Lazarus, how the rich man, he dressed in purple every day. In other words, he was dressing like a king every day in his house. So this lady, so it was common for Pope folks to, to dress up even when they was not going anywhere. See, we dress up most of the time when we're going somewhere. But people in Bible days, even when they weren't going nowhere, they were dressed up because that would just make them feel good about themselves. And so no doubt this lady, she had this hat on there in the house and she got ready to put it on one day and she saw one of the coins was missing and she swept that whole house. She turned that house upside down until she found that coin. And so uh, this lady, uh, 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 she had this hat with these coins on. You know, Peter even talks about that. We see an example of that in church. We see an example of that in church, how ladies, they would uh, uh, decorate. They would put jewelry they would put pearls and stuff. Remember, I was teaching in Revelation and they was talking about the pearly gates. Pearls was one of the most valuable things back in Bible day. And, and ladies would put pearls and stuff in their hair. You know, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. You remember the story of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. And uh, they had a banquet once and Cleopatra uh, bet it that uh, she could drink, she could drink a uh, million dollars worth of wine. She could drink a million dollars worth of wine. And uh, that's all you, you, so they went on and bet, you know, Mark Anthony went on and bet because he said, I know you ain't gonna be able to drink a million dollars worth of wine. What she done, she took her pearls, <laughs> one of her pearls, that was valued more than a million dollars, and she put it there in the in the cup of wine, and she drank it. And so uh, that's because she had all of this jewelry in her hair. Uh, and so people would flaunt their wealth. They would flaunt their wealth. Also, uh, when they wore their hats and stuff, again they put that jewelry around there. And Peter talked somewhat about it. He alludes to it. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, he says, your adornment must not be merely external, braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses. And so people would just decorate themselves. They would, they would put the gold and the silver and stuff on their hats. Uh, they would put it in their hair and stuff, braid their hair, and they would braid, you know, gold and silver and precious uh, stones all in their hair. I mean, over millions of dollars. They and that person cut off their head. <laughs> they, they could have over a million and some dollars. Um, so, uh, People back in Bible days, yes, they wore all kind of jewelry and stuff. And uh, most of the time, the ladies, they wore it in their uh, hair and in their hats. So should, uh, did women wear hats? Yes. Last thing, so that brings us to our question. Should women wear hats? Should they wear hats? And we're talking about particularly to church. Should women wear hats to church? Well, the Bible don't give a law saying that women has to wear hats. Uh, but the, uh, the Bible talks about Christian freedom. Christian freedom. It says all things, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. It says, all things are lawful for me, 
but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. And so Paul is telling us here that we have Christian freedom, but just because you got Christian freedom don't mean that you need to do certain things. And then he says, all things are lawful. You, you got Christian freedom, but not all things edify. Not all things edify. See, it's nothing wrong with you wearing a nice, pretty hat and stuff, but if you come to church and you're trying to show out, you got all this decoration up there in your hat, and you trying to uh, bring all attention to yourself, now we got a problem. That's not going to edify. That's not going to edify the church. Uh, if you wear a hat this big, where a person can't even see around you, they can't see the preacher, they can't see the choir, because your hat <laughs> is that big, then uh, you're going to discourage people. That's, that's, that's not edifying. But if you can wear your nice lit hat that can uh, encourage the people, make you feel good about yourself, make others feel good about themselves as well, then uh, it's nothing wrong with that. And then let me give you one last scripture, one last scripture. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 40, he said, let all things be done decently and in order. And so if you can wear your hat to church and without causing attention to yourself and being a distraction in church, go on and wear your hat. Amen. Amen. So should women wear hats? I'm going to just say, I'm going to make that a part of Christian freedom. You are free. You are free to wear your hats. Uh, but just make sure your good is not evil spoken of. Make sure that your good is not evil spoken of. All right. Well, that's our lesson for the night. Do, do everything that you do for edification, to edify, to build up the body of Christ. All right, well, that's our lesson for the night. Um, stay encouraged, particularly women. You stay encouraged. I say you stay encouraged. Celebrate, celebrate uh, this Mother's Day with your mother. And uh, those of you who don't have uh, a mother, uh, be encouraged because you're going to see your mother again. Matter of fact, uh, she's happy on the other side. Now, you go on and live life, and you be happy on this side, and then know one day there's going to be a great family reunion. Not on this side, but on the other side. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this lesson. I take this lesson and use it to bring honor and glory to your name. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. All right, now stay encouraged. I say stay encouraged. God bless you. Have a good night. And we'll see you on Sunday. Oh,